Hello and welcome to Marine Science Cafe. Today I intend to talk about beauty products and how to wash your face with plastic. Ever heard of microbeads? The super extra cleansing exfoliants that remove the pollution of the day and make your skin so soft? Yeah? Microbeads, also known as polyethylene slash plastic. And you've probably heard where these microbeads end up once you've washed your face and your skin is soft in our good old multi-purpose dump, the ocean. So as you may know, a few months ago I got hired to work in a plastic lab. In this lab I had access to all sorts of absolutely amazing machines that analyze the plastic. And then something really quickly obsessed me. Cosmetic products. We've all heard of microbeads and of that issue of microbeads ending up in the ocean. But like for many things, I realized I only had a vague understanding of what the issue was. So I became really obsessed about finding all these cosmetic products in shops so that I could find plastic and analyze it. First, I wanted to find a product that had plastic in it. Whether or not there was polyethylene in this ingredients. Once I have found the product, I would bring it back to the lab and analyze it. The goal was to see how much plastic there is in there. Let me show you what I mean. If you open this, you will notice that there's all these little blue beads. And this uh, looks like that would be a microbead. I would expect that this is a polyethylene microbead and it says it has polyethylene. So I just want to collect all these microbeads. There was something else that I wanted to do though. I also wanted to see if I could find plastic in a product that does not advertise plastic. Let me walk you through briefly my little lab adventure. In order to identify the plastic in a product, you first need to isolate the plastic particles. That's not an easy task because these particles are attached to the soap. So in order to isolate them, you have to dump all your soap into some jar and then you have to add a lot of really hot water and then you need to add a little stir and you need to put that into a plate that is going to warm up everything and it's gonna stir at the same time. As you're doing that, the soap is going to detach itself from the plastic particles and eventually you're going to rinse your product, rinse it and rinse it over and over and over and over again and you'll end up having just the particles left. Then I look under the microscope, sort these particles into different types. You have these blue beads, you have the white fluffs, and then I analyze these particles using the FTIR machine. The FTIR machine, and I'm not going to go into the details here, is actually going to give me an absorbance spectrum. And that absorbance spectrum is unique for any type of chemical. So if a particle is indeed polyethylene, I should be able to have an absorbance spectrum for polyethylene. And this is what I got. Indeed. Polyethylene. Lots of it. Lots of it. That's right. Remember when I was saying that these blue beads were most likely polyethylene? Well, what you cannot see is that there's not just blue beads in here. There's also white fluff. And that white fluff is also polyethylene. And in this tiny, puny little face scrub, that is how much plastic I have found. It's a lot of plastic. It's a lot of plastic. All of it is polyethylene, not just the blue beads, but also the white fluff. But once more, I will be fair with you. It was actually difficult for me to find plastic into the products, even scrubs. Why is that? Well, there was actually a big campaign to get rid of these microbeads not too long ago. It was initiated by websites such as Beat the Microbeads, where people got to learn about the amount of plastic that is found into their cosmetic products. For example, the scientist actually told the public how much plastic there was into their Colgate toothpaste. That's right, until 2014, when Colgate most likely started getting rid of the plastic in their toothpaste, you probably brushed your teeth with a lot of plastic. Especially if you're using extra white toothpaste or if you're a kid, because of course, they loved putting these microbeads into kids' toothpaste. So of course I took an extra white Colgate toothpaste that doesn't state that it has plastic because I couldn't find any that has plastic and I analyzed it. And this is what I found. There's definitely something there. I put it under the FTIR and it does not seem to be plastic. So it seems fair to say that Colgate most likely replaced their plastic by something else. But who knows what? 
L'Occitane, which is a kind of a high-end French product, which makes these natural cosmetics, had a lot of plastic in their scrubs. And they have actually replaced this plastic by nutshells. On the other hand, there is something fishy about this Garnier scrub. There is no polyethylene in the ingredients, and when I isolated the hard particles, this is how much stuff I found. The white particles actually has the spectral signature of perlite, and it's some sort of volcanic rock, so it's not plastic, definitely not. The blue particles, however, were a little bit more difficult. They had the chemical signature of polyethylene, but mixed up with something else. So is it possible that when you mix polyethylene with something else, you're not entitled to call it polyethylene anymore? So as far as this product goes, I wouldn't recommend it, that's for sure. So what's the outcome of my little experiments? Well, what I can tell you for sure is that the products that actually list polyethylene in the ingredients have a lot of polyethylene in them. And this cannot completely be filtered by the sewage system. It goes into the ocean. Products that do not state polyethylene in the ingredients may have polyethylene or may not. If you really want to make sure that you're avoiding plastic and cosmetics, what I would really recommend is to just avoid any kind of scrubs or things that are likely to have some abrasive to it, such as plastic microbeads. However, if you're gonna have to use this because your skin really needs it, then I would recommend to check out a website such as Beat the Microbeads, which can give you an indication of how much plastic there is in your product, whether or not there is plastic. And you have some beauty products such as those coming from the body shop that are quite recommended and that don't actually have plastic in them. So that's it for today. I realize I haven't actually drank any of my tea. If you're wondering why my skin is so beautiful, well, trust me, it's not because of scrubs. On that note, I shall see you later for another episode of Marine Science Cafe. See you later.